Cool. So let's get started. Uh, heads up, I have to leave at around 45, so like half an hour from now. Uh, okay. But uh, we can. We usually start by asking you to tell, just tell us a little bit about yourself and give us a little intro to your career so far. Okay, so I'm Chris Christodoulou. I mentioned it, it's a lot of people have problem pronouncing it. Uh, I'm from Greece. I'm a musician. I mostly write game music, but uh, I've written for some short films. Uh, I actually did a, a feature film last year, some commercial stuff and some music like uh, let's say standalone music or concert hall compositions, what have you. Uh, but but I may mostly make my money uh, from games. That's where I make my living. Uh, I'm assuming most of the people might know me from Risk of Rain, which is like the most successful thing I've done. Uh, okay. But I don't know, maybe some other stuff. Uh, I did Deadbolt with Hopu. Again, the same team from Risk of Rain. My first score was The Sea Will Claim Everything, which was kind of like an orchestral thing, very different. Uh, and I'm currently working with Hopu on uh, Risk of Rain 2 again, which means we have a pretty good collaboration, which is nice. And maybe it will come into play with the questions and stuff. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Where is the Risk of Rain team uh, based in? The Risk of Rain team is based in the US and uh, at, the, the, uh, at the current state of the team, which has expanded a little bit, it's not, it's not in like one city. Uh, and I'm in Greece, uh, so we, we work uh, remotely. Um, it hasn't been a problem uh, uh, until now. I think actually it might have even been a benefit because we're, uh, you know, we like our peace and quiet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I think a lot of uh, of game teams are uh, spread around. Maybe not like the core development team, but uh, like freelancers like myself. A lot of the times are just are elsewhere from like the, the main team. How many years have you been making music for games? Uh, I, th I, I think that my first score was on 2012. If I, if I, I, think, I, think, I think it was 2012, yeah. Well, I'll probably started writing sometime in 2011 or something, but yeah, that, that was it. So it's now about six years, I guess. So Elijah just asked, uh, had you? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm on the chat. Uh, if you want me to, cool. I don't know how you want me to, uh, uh, to, to do this, should I just go ahead and answer questions on the chat? Or yeah. do you want to moderate a little bit? I don't know. Um, I'll, yeah, you can just uh, answer questions directly on the chat. Uh, feel free to like reread the question if you want, uh, just for the recording. Okay, sure, I will. And I also have a couple of questions for you guys. Uh, but I, I'll, awesome. I'll, yeah. So uh, Elijah asks, uh, had you done a lot of remote collaboration before teaming up with Hopu? Uh, um, I don't want to say a lot, but in fact, my two other uh, game jobs before Hopu were also remote. Uh, the, the, the first game I did was with a developer that was uh, in Germany at the time. And the other one was with a Greek developer, but I was in Amsterdam, so it was still remote. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and uh, I've done... I've, I've also done like some short films during my time in Amsterdam, which was it, it, we, we were at the same place, but it, a lot of the work was done remotely still, you know, because I was working in my studio and they were in like an editing bay or something. And a lot of the time was spent, you know, over Dropbox, over email, over Skype. So it's, it's still 
uh, we, we had the luxury of meeting and, and going into the editing room and, and discussing things, which is a real nice thing, especially, especially in a film. Uh, but still, a lot of remoteness was involved. Uh, so I wanted to ask, actually, is, is everybody here a musician? Are there, uh, like, developers? What, what, what's, what this, uh, who am I talking to, basically? Yeah. I'll just let them type. Uh, while they're while they're typing, I can just say that I I'm a programmer. Uh, I freelance. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not a student. I'm I'm just. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, I know. <laughs> the the group, the IGDA group uh, itself is pretty diverse. There's tends to be students from most backgrounds. But here in chat, I'll let them speak for themselves. All right, and I would I would really like to know is uh, where everybody's from. I mean, not everybody, but uh, I'm I'm assuming some people are from <laughs> yeah. the U.S. I'll let them finish typing. <laughs> All right. I hope there's no lag on my part or something. I I I think I shut everything down, like you know, Dropbox or legal torrents and all that stuff yeah you you're, you seem to be coming across pretty smooth good okay so ian says he's in 3d art but wants to learn uh, as much as uh, he can uh, about game development i, th I think that <clears throat> sorry that's an interesting thing because what i found working on games was that i mean and, and on films too is that you really need to be kind of educated about the medium that you're working on uh, and it's not enough to just you know like write good music or something because you have to deal with things that are particular to the medium you know uh, either games or, or or films or whatever and i've also found that it, it it's always like the most interesting part is uh learning about those other aspects you know because uh I, I spent like most of my life learning music and it's not like i know music uh well enough or or good enough or i've finished up with that but that's something that i kind of always do so you know get getting kind of some other additional knowledge that might inform also uh the way you approach music that's that's a really good thing and it's also very good to have like a common uh, language with the people you're working on because you know if you're working with like a director or a developer a developer and he says something that you don't understand and they have to spend time to like explain and uh that's always kind of uh it's, it's gonna push things back and, and slow things down basically do you ever cringe when people use musical terms incorrectly? Uh, no, I don't cringe because I don't expect people to to know musical terms. But sometimes I've had issues with people trying to to describe something and uh, and, and actually like describing using words that I thought they were meant to describe something entirely different. So we had to spend some time you know like figuring out that oh this is what you mean and you know but but uh it's it's not it's uh i find it's better to just you know uh explain to people and and tell them no this is called that and and it's something that they learn to um it, uh -huh. it always helps yeah Uh, Elisha says, uh, thanks for the, uh, kind words, by the way, I'm just going to go to the question, wanting to learn more about what sure. makes effective collaboration between remote dev teams with regard to music. Hmm, I don't, um, that's a, that's an interesting, uh, one because effective collaboration, I don't, I don't think I can say with regard to music. I mean, it helps if 
if uh, uh, the the team you're uh, working with has some sort of musical vocabulary and understanding, and it helps if they have a good vision of what they want to do. But there were times that I found that got in the way, like people kind of uh, like interfering too much. I don't want to say interfering because it's the, the feedback from the team is always valuable, you know, even... Uh, and especially like one of the most valuable feedbacks is I don't like this music because then you have a very good guide of, uh, okay, I won't do that. Uh, it's when it gets more esoteric or I like this, but I don't know why, or I like this kind of, but I'm not sure which it is. Um, so that's, that's where it gets a bit more difficult to, to fine tune things like, uh, uh, but, but I found that like effective collaboration, I think the most basic thing is just to kind of like, uh, do your job and, and be good to people. You know, it's not, it's, that's what makes like the col collaboration we had with Hopu, for example, which I think it's, it's really good. Uh, I've had a lot of trust from them and I've also uh put a lot of trust in them to you know to to always let me know like to to, to have like um like a, a feedback that is always honest basically so i don't know that that's that's the most important thing i think what's your creative process like yeah yeah uh, and, and sorry uh, uh, sure. uh just one last thing about the remote dev teams i think one of the good things is, is to know like the time zone and you know kind of deal with that that's that's something that we, you always have to tackle so that's i mean that's not hard but uh so so i was asking about your creative process and specifically like when you start working on a game how much time do you typically have to define how the game sounds and what does the back and forth between you and the team look like and all that? Uh, my creative process, I usually spend a lot of time not writing music uh, and uh, basically like thinking about the music. That's, I would say that in my, like my composition stage is predominantly spent not writing music, not in front of the computer. It's like thinking about it and uh i'm this is gonna sound very like uh i don't know like like uh maybe hipsterish or something i don't know but uh, -huh. uh i do spend a lot of time just like listening to to other stuff and taking like walks reading books i found that this is like really helpful when you're starting something new to get like new ideas into your mind it doesn't don't necessarily have to do with music but just get get your mind working you know in, uh, bring new stuff into it and that's really like sparks ideas it gets uh, then when i when i've spent like a week just thinking about the music and and not writing music and just getting new information in when i sit in the computer it's i find it's much easier or in front of the piano or whatever i find it much easier to you know start writing something that feels fresh to me and not being bored by it you know it's not like um i don't want to i don't want to have downtime in front of the computer i don't want to be looking at the screen or looking at the keyboard and and not having ideas so i don't know this this helps this helps me a lot at least that's interesting that's an interesting way to like dividing up your your space like to put that limit on yourself and be like, I don't want, like, if, if you don't have ideas, then don't be on at the computer. <laughs> I just feel like that's a really like productive mindset. Yeah, because uh, one thing I found is that it's, uh, I know a lot of people, for a lot of people, music is like a mystifying, and all art is like a mystifying topic. Uh, uh, but, but the reality is, if you spend enough time like educating yourself about music or I don't know, painting or whatever, or writing, I mean, I can sit in the, in the keyboard and, and write new music. That's not, that's not an issue I have. I'm not, 
I'm, I'm very rarely faced with like creative blocks or something because I've basically learned how to do it, you know? Uh, I, so, I, but, but the thing is that while I can always just sit and write something, it doesn't mean that it's always going to be good. And, and I, what I want to avoid is it to, to make this like a dull process, like a, like a, like a, like I'm churning out music just because I can. And also to, you know, like basically, yeah, just, 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 um, bring like new stuff into my brain so that I get it into this mood that it's, 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 uh, in, in, a create something new mode, you know? Nice. Do you have a favorite project that you work on? A favorite project from from my past projects, you mean? Uh, yeah. Uh, I must say that my very first project is very dear to me. The Sea Will Claim Everything because it's a game that I, I love very much. Uh, What's it called again? The Sea Will Claim Everything. I'll, I'll okay. type it. Uh, Um, it's a very dear game to me. I mean, uh, and the music I've wrote for it is very deeply connected to what I've been going through at the time. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't mean to say it in like a, a me and in a bad way that I've been going through rough times or something, but, but with the, with the time that I was writing the music, I mean, I recall the, these times when I listen to the music, and it's it has a lot of meaning to me. Uh, and it's also the the very first thing I did, which has like a, a significance on its own, because um, despite like the game didn't do well, like financially or or commercially, like didn't sell too many units, and I didn't. I literally got paid like a hundred and eighty uh, dollars for it. Uh, so it wasn't like, I, I did it kind of, I, I, I <laughs> the project a lot, uh, the, the developer, we became friends immediately and he, he didn't, he didn't get paid for it either. I mean, he didn't got any money from it. So it was kind of, uh, but, uh, it, it really sort of, it was very useful for my career because it's kind of this this uh, gig got me my next gig and my next gig got me risk of rain so which was like the the thing that sort of made me a little bit more uh, known into the into the uh, gaming community and especially with the developers and stuff um so it has this importance too but but i do like the music uh, also uh and then after that it's it's definitely risk of rain because with risk of rain it's I, I also mentioned this in like whenever i talk about risk of rain i say that if you want to know what music i grew up listening to you can listen to risk of rain it's it's kind of like a like a thread from all the music that i've listened to when i was a kid you know and it has everything is in there it's like a blueprint of my musical like identity you know and and i i got a literally like hope it was like yeah, just do your thing, you know? And then they, we, I don't think we have even like one piece that I wrote that didn't end up in the game because I, it was just like, they just liked it, you know? Um, so, yeah, and we, and we got to do some crazy stuff, you know, some like uh, uh, odd meters and things like that that I'm very fond of, which was also nice. Uh, I don't know any other questions or looks like Elijah's typing. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, do you have any uh, game dev heroes that you look up to, like people whose work you really admire? Uh, the, from the, the developers, you mean? You, uh, mainly, mainly just people in the games industry, uh, and kind of mainly about music. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. From from musicians. Uh, 
uh, there's one that I, I do love the work of Faustin Wintery. I, I follow like uh -huh. almost creepily, I would say. Uh, <laughs> I have I have friends who would say the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, I I try to follow what what goes on in game music. Is it, I don't always get to hear listen to everything. Uh, but I try to 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 know what's going on. But if if you were to ask me, you know, like about my favorite scores or my favorite like composers and stuff, they would all be people from like years ago. So, so when I was kind of uh, growing up playing games, because unfortunately now I don't have the time to play as much as I want. Ah, uh, the the typical game developer. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of. I mean, we also, you know, we we grow up and you have other things to do. It's not that I yeah. enjoy playing games or something, but I would I would really love, for example, to to sit for I don't know uh, seventy hours and play Civilization, which is a game I love, but I don't have that luxury anymore, and it doesn't feel right to play like. 45 minutes of civilization because you don't do anything. So I kind I had just have the game installed in my computer and just I'm just looking at it. <laughs> so yeah, I I found similar things as well that my attempt uh, my like most reviewed games and also like the time, back when I had the time to even like look up more stuff from the creation side of that game. Uh, all of that is very biased towards like my early years when I still had time to do the, all of that work. And now, now stuff comes out and I'm like, oh, I didn't even know that it was out. <laughs> yeah. And also you don't have the time to make like a deep connection with things because when you're, when you're a kid, you, you, you play that game, you know, you, you live that game in a different way. Just like I don't make a strong connections with new music, you know, that I listen to. I find things that I like all the time, but if I if I want to feel like a warmth inside me, I'm, I'll just go and listen to some old Pink Floyd record or or Queen or something. Uh, so it's it's hard to to get that deep connection with new stuff. At least that's that's what I find. Uh, once in a while, you get you know really interesting things, like for example, like the Banner Saga soundtrack. That's something that I liked a lot. Um, Elijah is asking, um, uh, I was wondering about the process for Risk of Rain. Was it really as simple as do your thing? Is, uh, sorry, uh, that's what I was really close. So in that case, was it really as simple as do your thing? It was just perfect for the game. So I almost have trouble believing it. Huh? Ah, okay, sorry. Yeah. The question it was just like a comment. Well, it, it sounds like... I'm trying to talk and read at the same time. So yeah. I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, sounds like the, it sounds like the main question is... Um... I have an answer to that, actually. Let sure. Me, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I found, especially with Risk of Rain, is that people, when they play a game, the music that is there, they assume that this is the correct music for that game. It needs to be like very off and very weird for people to like say, oh, this is not, this is kind of not part of the game or it makes no sense or something. And in that sense, we discovered with Risk of Rain that we could we don't we didn't need to do like quote unquote game music whatever that means because game music is like a weird term if you play like a super mario on game boy like the the music for the level is like 30 seconds and it just plays you know do you play yeah. the level for five minutes it's just those 30 seconds repeating you don't have a problem with it is it but but this is not how we approached Risk of Rain, and that's part, partly because we, all of us, were amateurs. We didn't know, like, really what we were doing. We were kind of winging a lot of the stuff. But we also discovered that you can, you can go off the beaten track a little bit, and, and people won't mind, because we had... The, Risk of Rain is like a game that has a lot of action. It has, like, kind of frantic action. And for a lot of the levels, we had just like calm music playing. And that makes that made sense to the players because 
it's not because we intended to that as a, a way to like uh, you know like kurosawa would put like calm music in the in an action scene or something we just it was just the music that was coming out you know i was looking at the pictures i didn't i didn't have a lot of the game to play so i was mostly looking at graphics and stuff and i was writing and i was inspired like by colors or like pixel art or whatever and a lot of the things i think that if like a triple a de development team would get that music they would immediately discard it some of the music at least so it but we we had the luxury to do this experiment we weren't expecting the game to to become like as as well known as it did so it's not like we had any kind of like strict guides that we needed to follow or something we're just kind of experimenting a little bit um but in the end we found that it worked out and the most important thing like i discovered like w with reading comments from people uh, uh on youtube and stuff is that people assign a lot of meaning into the music on their own and it's not that the music is is devoid of meaning but a lot of the people do associations that are were obviously not there from me you know and this is something that happens especially with games of things this ha this happens a lot i mean it's uh, games have this kind of uh, power a little bit more than films have to to create like weird associations and, and give weird meaning to to things depending on your state of mind depending on you know you can listen to the same track when there's like two enemies on stage and you're playing like kind of uh comfortably and you can listen to the same track when there's like 20 enemies and they're attacking you from all, all the and you you have just the you're all at the at the brink of death or something you know so it's it's really interesting like that so we found that it you don't need to have any like you don't always need to 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 follow guides like okay this is a boss fight so we need a boss music you we, you can break out of these uh uh like norms and uh, about like the follow up that Elisha uh added like did they request specifics we had a bit of a plan and we always do in all the games that you know we have x number of levels the, i knew how the game would play out you know like you start the game you you hit the teleporter so and so changes will happen uh we need like different music for this different music for that we need like something that will go into the menu or th things like that uh, but i, I literally got like two tr reference tracks during risk of rain from hopu like uh, they didn't they they just uh they sent me an email uh and they said we listen to this album of yours like a previous album i had done which was electronic and we thought it that mood guy sort of fits with the game that we're trying to make but they didn't ask me to do something exactly like that they just said this is how we found you and we fit we thought you would fit this game so the reference tracks were your own music no, no, there, there were two reference tracks that were, but the interesting thing, and this is kind of, uh, I give huge props to Hopu about that, because during Deadbolt, I had a little bit more reference tracks, and none of them were game music. N none of the tracks were music from games, which I think this is like a really important thing that developers should, should pay attention to. Uh, uh i i hate getting like game music references because this puts you into a very narrow frame of mind you get the sense that oh okay i need to make this and it's like a loop and it's like this game and kind of and especially like when you get references from from music that is like from the 90s or whatever you hear you hear like this old school production like the 16 bit or the 8 bit stuff but in my mind i know that the composer didn't write 8 bit music or, or 16 bit music because they wanted to do this it was just the the restrictions of the time but i don't have those restrictions and i can you know i have other tools that i can use and i always like to set my own rules and rules are very important but i don't want to i don't want my rules to be the rules of a different guy 
You know, I want to I wanted to set rules that apply to the current project and figure them out as I go, basically. That's cool. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense, but I hope so. Yeah, like most creative work is about working with constraints, figuring out figuring out which constraints are, I guess, real and which ones are helpful. Yeah, you figure out stuff like instrumentation, uh, like the style, the mood, uh, all those things. You know, you you fine tune them as you as you work in a game. You know, uh, as you write new music. Like for example, uh, related to my my process, uh, the question about my process earlier. One thing that I always do is that I never start with a with a theme or any sort of theme. I write music. Like I might have some sort of melody or whatever, but usually I figure out my main theme or my, or the the uh, an assortment of themes down the road and then I just go back and add those themes to the tracks that I've already written because I don't want to pressure myself with I must start with the theme and find out you know like what 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 is the like the catchy melody or whatever of of a specific project so that's really interesting yeah I've I've always done this to 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 the degree that I've like like almost 100% reward tracks to to retrofit like the new theme that has emerged down the road into to an older track. Cool. So I have to go now. Um, I'm going to end the recording, but you guys can stay here and wait, uh, basically use up the rest of the hour. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, can, I can stay uh, long enough, but um, you have to go. So you have to stop the recording also. Right. That's, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I don't know if anybody, anyone else is recording just for the for night. Like Ian, night. Ian has attempted to record things in the past, so maybe he's typing offering right now. If if it's possible, it would be nice. Uh, but I mean, regardless, I, I, anyone can should feel free to post a question, and if they want to, I don't know. I don't want to create chaos or something. But if somebody wants to ask a question. Uh, and jump like on the voice chat or something that's also cool I don't know. it sounds like most people are just like in a place where they can't really speak openly okay yeah maybe like in offices or work or school or something right so i'm gonna okay. i'm gonna head out now see ya thank you thank you so much for joining us this was really fun <laughs> thank thanks thanks for having me I'll, I'll just keep on for as long as people have questions take care Thanks. It's it's fine, uh, and the like. One of the pieces of advice I always give to people is don't bother too much with software because there's plenty of free software out there that you can can do most of the job. Uh, so if you need like an equalizer, there's a good free equalizer. If you need like a compressor, there's a good free compressor. Uh, I would say spend time to learn how how to use any software. So you like familiarize with yourself, with like the production process a little bit, or how to comp compose in a computer because that's useful, obviously. But but it, all of that is useless if you don't if you haven't spent time learning music. So you know, kind of should be the first thing to that anyone should focus on if they want to write music. But, and also another thing about software, because I remember when I was, was working with Cubase at the time that everybody was on their Macs and doing, uh, working on Logic or Pro Tools or whatever. And at the time Cubase was not that mainstream. Uh, and I, I got a lot of weird looks from people at, you know, like uh, maybe 15 years ago or something. And now everybody's using Cubase because basically Hans Zimmer is using it and he kind of popularized it. Uh, but I, I give this advice like wholeheartedly. Just don't give a fuck about what people think about the software that you're using. If you're using, if you're 
if you're using Fruity Loops and you're producing good music, I don't, when I put on a, a CD on, I don't hear your sequencer. I hear the music. So, you know, don't, don't bother too much. If, if your workflow is, is, is uh, working within uh, any software that you like, just go with it, you know? If at some time you feel like testing out new software, that's also admirable if you have the time to do that. At this time, I don't know if I could ever change. I mean, from Cubase, just because I'm too bored to learn something new, but I don't know. Uh, so Elijah asks, as you particularly don't enjoy working from music, how do you work around that kind of difference between your work preferences and the rest of the team on a project? Does everyone try to make sure everyone is on the same page before starting with music in the production? Yeah, usually we will have some talks about music that will be uh, about style. It will be about influences. It will be about the genre of the game because some you you don't I don't I don't mean to say that I disregard what the game is about and I just write my own thing and then I force people to shoehorn it into a game. I'm just saying that I don't necessarily uh try to to do to do it like the the game way the, the way it's been done uh at all times um and and it's not that i don't like game music i love i love a lot of game music and it's like uh it's music from games that made me want to to write music from games it's not that i was just you know uh i it's Doing doing this is something that I really wanted and I really pursued. So it's not that I have any beef with uh, uh, video game music. Um, but yeah, we do have talks uh, about it, and usually, depending on on uh, the collaboration, especially if it's with new people, <clears throat> we we usually have a round of testing. You know, I will send a demo. They will say, okay, this is kind of, but maybe take it more to this dire direction. Uh, we might have a, a list of specifics, like, you know, we need a X amount of fast music or whatever. Um, sometimes I've had, I've had dev developers that were very musically inclined. So I've had like very specific requests, like remove this instrument, add something that sounds like this or you know whatever which is which is also fun uh i i want i want to restate something that i said earlier that the, there's no feedback that is bad you know there's no i've never had feedback that didn't like had a positive effect on the on the outcome even if i see the feedback and i disagree with it it will spark a discussion you know about the so i'm i'm assuming that at the end of the day after there's been a bit of trial and error and stuff yes we are on the same page yeah because if if we're not uh we first of all the the, the developer will be disappointed in me so i don't want that. uh but i but it but you have to find I, I think that it's important, and this goes back to the collaboration question, that it's, you shouldn't like focus on like middle grounds or stuff. You shouldn't be in a point where everybody's just a little bit dissatisfied. You should actually doing something that you enjoy. And sometimes that's not possible in the sense that you have to also, you know, work for a living. So you have to do gigs that are not 100% satisfactory but it's good to you know if if you if you i found that working on on projects that i didn't really like i can hear that in the music 100 percent. even you know if it's decent it's not it's not music that i love i because the music that i had fun writing i go back and listen to it all the time and i enjoy listening to 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 the music that i enjoyed writing so there's that aspect you know yeah it is it is a very iterative process process and and you need to have you need to to be open you need to be like open to criticism you need to be 
you're open to to feedback and the other people should you know listen to your feedback also because if somebody uh hires a musician to write music it's because they are supposedly good at writing music so you know if uh it, it's it's good to listen to to that person um uh, but yeah it's it's a lot of back and forth there's a lot of uh it's very dialectical i would say thank you thank you brandon for for joining and for having me okay so lasha has to leave too so i don't uh uh thanks for having me again yeah it's it's, it's really cool to do this uh uh anything else that i want to cover one th I, uh, I don't know how many people here aspire to like write game music or are game developers or whatever but i just want to say that uh, something that i've always there are, there are two things that i come across that might be worth mentioning is the one thing is that i get a lot of people are sending me emails and stuff or comments or whatever asking me basically how they can be a music composer in like a couple of weeks which is an impossible thing i've seen a lot of people that have like zero music knowledge that think that they can just be a music composer just because they can i don't know pick up a, a piece of software and learn it or something uh i'd say whatever you want to do is it music is it art is it programming spend a lot of time learning about it you know don't 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 rush don't want don't assume that you can just rush through it and and and, and make some money out of it because and that's the second thing that i want to say that don't assume that just because somebody has made like a successful game or whatever that they suddenly are like like well off and now if i don't know i don't want to assume anything for, for you guys or whatever but i've seen people online that assume that i'm now like done that i had risk of rain it was a huge success so i'm like just cruising you know and this is not the case at all so just want to make sure that people don't expect us like like a quick money on game development or music writing music or whatever they can i don't know do download a bunch of loops and piece together like some music and that and they're done just you know spend a lot of time learning your crafts don't rush write a lot of music write do a lot of art practice on it and and sort of prepare for that moment because <clears throat> when somebody asks you or you send you're sending like a thousand emails to developers or whatever looking for gigs when somebody says okay jump in the project go do it if you're if you just feel that you're ready, it's not enough. You need to have done the work ahead of time to, to be ready to, you know, like uh, meet a deadline, uh, do proper work in time, adjust quickly. And of course, do the thing that you do well enough, you know, that, that, that it, it does the job and, it, and that you're basically invited back. So, you know, focus on that, learn the craft and also read a lot of books. That's that's the that's the last thing that I want to say. Read a lot of books on a, on anything. So uh, I don't know. I if anybody wants to ask anything else, happy to answer. But otherwise, we might call it off. Uh, it does remind me we've talked a few times about what people do outside of game development. So if you want, can you shape what interest you have outside of music that you participate in oh yeah that's that's an interesting question yeah um well the, the one thing that i do is that i read i constantly read something that's something that i, I like doing uh, i do very like normal stuff like i don't know um watch movies i do that quite a lot i'd say i've i've tried to cut down on on watching tv shows and and started kind of focusing more on, on films um try to walk a lot like just walk because it kind of sort of clears my head i listen to podcasts 
well, not a lot, but I, I listen to podcasts a lot. Um, and these are not like music related podcasts or like random, like comedy podcasts or I don't know, uh, whatever topic I might be interested in at the time. Um, I don't know. I play board games once in a while. I, I, I don't know. That, that's, I try to educate myself a lot. Like re, I, I try to read about like philosophy, history, things like that. Science. These are really interesting topics. And they're very, very I find that they're really inspiring also. Like when you want to do art stuff, these topics like always feed into my music. I'd say even more than music itself like other musical influences um i think that that's most of it try to run once in a while but yeah that comes and goes all right i might actually yeah i would i would i would uh it would be fun to post like a this list of like things I've read or watched lately or whatever, I might post them in the appropriate threads. Uh, thank you, Ian. Actually, thank you for all recording the rest of it uh, or all of it, I assume. Um, thank you for having me again. It's it's really fun. I uh, would happily do it again. Uh, and. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess that's it. I, I, I do hope it was interesting. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for saying that.